Hi there, I'm Black Bright and I'm broadcasting out the UK around the world and I um, just want to say welcome to my channel. I wanted to talk about money. Money is at the root of all evil. Why is money either frowned upon? Why is it such a problem? What do people think about money? You know, I was thinking the other day about, well, to be honest, I was watching a program and they said that this guy, the most he'd ever spent on a date was £20. And all these girls were jeering at him and saying, you miser, £20, is that all you've ever spent? And it led me to think about how they were judging him. They don't know, because it's one of these programs where they um, interview you, they ask you all of these questions and then they take it out of context. So you don't know what context um, it happens. So in this particular case, this guy had spent, had obviously told the producers that he'd only spent £20. That's the most he'd ever spent on a date. Now, when, he, and he's about, I think he's 23. So, we don't know whether or not that was when he was a student, that was when, you know, we don't know the circumstances, but the women who were seeing these guys as a potential date, of course I'm talking about Love Island again, um, they, they kind of jeered him and said, oh, you're so mean, 20 pounds. It made me realise that money is, is quite symbolic. It's, I don't think money, money definitely in and of itself is not evil. It's the way it is viewed. It's the love of money, the, the, if it makes you greedy, if it makes you do scams, if it causes you to do criminal um, criminal activities, if it causes you to kill, if it causes you to betray your family, if it causes you to call, you know, cause discontent over um, the bequeathed estate. You know, when somebody dies, you get people fighting over money. That's when money becomes evil, when it's taken out of its pure context and people start having an attitude about it, feeling deserving, feeling entitled, or they feel powerful or is used to exploit, it's used to abuse. That is when money is evil. In and of itself, it's not evil. I believe that money is um, symbolic. I think... You know, like sometimes you hear these women talking about, oh, he's got to have a job, he's got to um, be able to do my nails, he's got to be able to do my, my, um, pay my bills and all this crap. I think that indirectly, what that woman is saying is that is a standard. That could be her standard I don't know how much money she's got when she's making those demands but what she's indirectly saying is that I want a man who is able to look after me forget about the nails forget about the um the bills and stuff I do personally I don't believe a man should pay a woman's bills if he's not living there a man should be helping and supporting a woman but not paying for her bills because that means if he does pay for her bills and he's not living there that's obviously he's obviously exercising some kind of control in another way and he'll do that to maybe control her down the line any man you find that is going to pay for your bills and he's not living there give you money and he's not and he's not um getting anything back out of it and he's just feeding you with money all the time like some guys you find that they you know every day they're kind of um sending you flowers giving you money um well and i'm not talking about people who are rich i'm not talking about people who are celebrities i'm talking about the general john joe who may even be borrowing to make it look like he's at, he's the ideal man for you you've got to be careful when people are give without feeling devalued and without um, you have to be careful here because I don't want to give the impression that I'm saying 
that you shouldn't accept gifts. But it's about what do those gifts represent for you? What do those gifts tell you about that individual? Is it telling you that, oh, he can look after me? Is it telling you, oh, he must have money? Is it telling you, oh, he must have a good job? And I'm talking about men who you don't really know. I'm not talking about men who you live with or husbands and stuff like that. I'm talking about men that you might be dating or you've just met. What does money mean to you? And also, money, men can use money to entrap women. You know, you can get men who give women women money to entrap them, to make them feel as though this is what you're going to be used to. This is what you're going to get if you and I get together. If you and I live together, this is what you're going to get. So, you know, you have to ask yourself, what does money mean to you? What does it symbolise? If a man can only um, take you down to the, the, the corner pub and buy you a glass of shandy, and he can't afford to buy you a meal. What does that tell you? Are you going to judge that man um, based on that particular circumstance? Because once again, you don't know if somebody's testing your standards and your reaction and your response. So money has got a lot. Money, it, money is a dodgy thing, really, because it can bring out the worst in you or it can bring out the best in you. And I really believe that, like I said, money in and of itself is not, um, it's not evil. Sometimes people see money as a way of appreciation. Um, it's a way of not feeling used. It's a way of not feeling exploited. You know, because you get some people who might be in a situation where they don't even need the money, but they kind of think to themselves, well, if that person is willing to do A, B, C, D and E, which is going to impact me, then, you know, that means that that person is willing to use me. And then you get men who have women who are always asking them for money and they reach a point where they start feeling used and they start feeling exploited. And I think that is where money starts becoming a problem. When an individual starts feeling used or starts feeling unappreciated, that is when money is a problem. But I think money should not be used in a way that um, people take advantage, that people um, um, use it as some kind of yardstick, as some kind of carrot. And I don't believe that, that you know, you'd be, you'd be, I find it's hard to believe that narcissists use money as leverage. And how they do it, that's why you have to be careful about men that spend a lot of money on you as women. Because what they do is that they kind of start buying you stuff and spending money on you. And then when they got you, they withdraw and you've already um, had a dependency on what they are giving you. I'll never forget um, this woman used to say her husband, he stopped her from working and he was giving her quite a Quite a lot of money. Well, when I say quite a lot of money, enough to keep enough so she didn't have to work. She could pay the bills then, put it that way. So she didn't have to work. But what happened was is that, and he did that for like six years, and that's a long time. And then suddenly he said um, he was still working, but suddenly he said, "Oh, I haven't got any money to give you this month." And she's like, oh, OK. But there again, she was foolish because she had created a dependency on him and his income. And she believed that he, as long as he was working, he would look after you, uh, look after her. But it was a part of his plan. I don't even think it was as long as six years, you know. I think it was before then, but it doesn't really matter. The point is, is that he started withdrawing just as she had become dependent. He'd given her enough time to 
have a dependency on what he was giving her. And then slowly but surely, one month turned into two months, two months turned into three months, three months turned into four months, and he had her under his control. Then she started getting emotional, then she started getting, then he started becoming abusive and she found herself in a situation where she said, I can't believe he was looking after me so well, he was doing everything for me and then suddenly he just withdrew everything and um, she was left with nothing. She turned, I mean, I think she turned into a mental wreck because not only did he withdraw the money but he also started abusing her and insulting her and devaluing her and saying that he didn't um she was worthless she'd never got a job and it doesn't matter that he was giving her money she should have done this she should have done that and she she had kids for him so it was a bona fide relationship but all of a sudden he just started withdrawing so all I'm saying is that, you know, when money is used like that to um, manipulate a situation, you have to be very careful. You have to know what money means to you, what it represents, what does it symbolise. If somebody is going to spend money or if they're not going to spend money, if they're going to give you money or if they don't give you money, what does it tell you? Are you making judgments about that person? Because sometimes, even when people don't give you money, there can be a, there can be a motive behind it. If they do give you money, there can be a motive behind it. Some people are testing you to see your reaction to money. So you have to know where you are and what you want it for, and what it means to you if you don't get it, especially if you are um, dating somebody and he's taking you out. If he's taking you out, are you are you prepared to go 50-50? Is that okay for you? Split it 50-50? Or do you expect him to, to foot the bill? And if so, why? You know, because you have to understand that Regardless of how um, how um, dating is, there's the two people are getting to know each other. So yes, it's fine if the man is, you know, well off and he's kind of saying, you know, no, I never allow a woman to pay. You're insulting me by saying that, and he actually means it. As opposed to somebody who you can look at and you can think, oh, bloody hell, he doesn't look like he's got that much. And you know you can help out and you decide, say, OK, he has offered um, to pay the bill, even though he looks like he's struggling. Why don't I pay for the drinks or why don't I pay for the tip? So it's about not making somebody feel used. It's about making somebody feel appreciated. You see, money can be used in a positive way. It can be used to show appreciation, it can be used to show that you're not using anyone, you're not taking advantage of anyone, it can be used in different ways. Um, some people, they can just have money and they're just mean, they're just not sharing it. When I used to work for solicitors, this woman, her husband wouldn't allow her to go on holidays. And um, every year she used to say, oh, I'd love to go on a holiday. And he says, no, no, we can't afford it. Would you believe he died? And guess how much was in his bank account? Four million pounds. She couldn't believe it. She could not believe it. And he died without using it. I mean, she ended up inheriting it and she gave a lot of it to charity because she was getting on a bit. But the fact of the matter is some people are just mean. How can you have four million pounds and you're, you're asking your, your wife is asking to go on a holiday year after year after year and you're not you're saying you can't afford it. And you're sitting on four million and then you die leaving it. What is the logic behind that? And it's not like they even had young children. Their children had grown, left the nest and all sorts. But I'll never forget that. And her face when she found out, never forget it. She was actually angry at her husband that he had denied her those holidays. 
But then, you know, she had her money. She was very, very generous with it. And she gave her lots of charity, like I said, and she was able to go on our holidays. But that is when you're mean. That's out and out mean. Um, selfish. It's all mine. Some people can be selfish. They can feel that, okay, I've earned this money. I don't need to share it. I'm not giving it to anybody. I've worked too hard for it. Nobody else ain't getting it. And, you know, some people are like that. Some people are just totally selfish. And, you know, they just don't want to share it. But, you know, it depends on people's upbringing. And like I said, it depends on how people have to work hard for it and what it means to them when they share it. What does it mean if they have money but they don't want to share it? What is it telling, what does he think that those people are going to do with it? Or does he feel as though he's making their life too easy? Or similarly she, does she feel as though she's making their lives too easy? If you know, she, if she or he gives them money for whatever reason. So, yeah, you've got, you've got that kind of thing. You've got greed. You've got people who scab people to get something for nothing. You know, that's all they do. They sit there thinking, oh, yeah, let me see how I'm going to get money out of these people. And, you know, these people who scam people and they think, oh, yeah, you know, they're elderly, they've got it. Or even if they try to scam rich people because they feel they've got it, they don't know how they've got it. And that's the thing. A lot of these people who sit behind these um, TV screens, not TV, laptops, and working out how they can get money for nothing thinking that, you know, people can get it back somehow. Their mindset is warped. Very, very evil because a lot of those people, they don't recover when they've been scammed. Some of them commit suicide. Sometimes, I remember listening to one man, it was all of his savings, all of his savings for his pension and his retirement. They'd ripped him off. And another man, he was lonely and this woman, she just sucked him out. I mean, she told him she was coming over. She sent pictures. She, you know, made out she came to the airport. Then she said they, they wouldn't let her through. All sorts, scammed him out of thousands of poor guy. He was crying. Seventies, all he wanted was some company. And they scammed him. And then you've got betrayal, like I said, with wills, where people trying to get as much as they can out of the will. And like I said, you know, some people knock people off so they can get a higher percentage. And then you get people, even in relationships, they, they, um, they take out money out of the bank account, especially when they've got joint bank accounts. They start siphoning out the back money out of the bank account. I know somebody... They got married and um, the, the husband had never used a credit card. He had it just because he needed it for credibility, but he never used it. Would you believe that wife took that credit card and I think she ran up about £4,000 on it? And the man nearly went mad, seriously mental, because he never had a debt. And she ran up £4,000 on his card. And it, she ran it up on foolishness. Clothes and shoes and all kind of foolishness. Not even like, you know, it was an emergency or that she needed it for something um, important. £4,000. So that's betrayal because she didn't ask him for the card. She didn't get his permission. I don't know how. I don't know how she, I don't know if she forged his signature. I don't know what she did but she was able to get that money and do whatever she wanted with it and hit the bill came to him. Exploitation, like I said, slavery, using people, trying to get something for nothing. You know, a lot of people are always trying to get one over, trying to get something for nothing. Like I said, the worst cause of slavery so much. There's human, um, human trafficking. There's physical slavery in all parts of Africa, even today. There's all sorts of abuse and um, financial abuse as well. Um, you know, you have people who've brought their wives into this country. And, you know, like I said, you know, I, where I work, we deal with some domestic abuse, which includes financial abuse. And you have 
these women who are not only being financially abused, their husbands have brought them over and their wives are totally depend on them, dependent on them because they, I think the husbands have to file for them if they want them to get their paperwork and they beat them up and they don't give them any money and the woman is left in the house, you know, can I make a phone call? Oh, I tell you, so that's when money is used for evil. That is when money is the root of all evil. But, um, yeah, what, what does the money represent both for the giver and for the receiver? Because the, both of them have different perceptions of what money means to them. And there is a, a boundary over which each of them either feels used or they feel um, appreciated. There's that borderline. If you spend this much, and it's not it's not a blanket amount, it's depending on the individual. If they spend that amount, they feel appreciated. If they don't spend that amount, they feel used. And if you ask for that amount too much, that's gone over, you're taking the pee. And if you don't ask for a certain amount, you, you don't value yourself. There's lots of dynamics involved, but they're individual. It's not a blanket, it's not a blanket, um, not a blanket, whatever you call it, I can't think of the word. And, um, yeah, and at what point does one person feel appreciated? At what point does a person feel abused or neglected or taken advantage of? And that is something, it's an individual, you can't, you can't, um, say everyone's going to have their own a different everyone's got a different uh, measuring stick that says okay if he doesn't do this that means he's taking the piss if he does do this that means he appreciates me he could say if she if she treats me this way that means she appreciates me if she asks me for too much that means she's taking the pee and then you know it's that kind of dynamic so yeah, money is symbolic. It's I think it's not really about the money itself. It's about what it represents. That's just my opinion. Let me know what you think. Bye-bye.